Khajiit has wares if you have coin. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Guide, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Check them out at www.sportsmansguide.com. Good morning. It's uh, 7.30ish and I'm still a little sleepy, but fortunately I have a little bit of coffee here. They provided free coffee, so I guess I can't complain. But uh, it's November 11th, uh, Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. It's also my birthday, oddly enough. I was born on Veterans Day. <laughs> Such a cliche. Anyway, today we're going to be getting rid of the ra getting the range ready and trying to figure out the method to safely demonstrate explosives to everybody here at Epic Shoot. This is going to be our first event where we ever provided explosives to everybody because normally we keep it into a tight group. Uh, uh, and this is sort of like, going to be like a uh, prototype for future events where we can come out, bring the explosives, do in a demonstration, let people handle them in a safe manner without causing any harm because, well, I don't really don't want that on my conscience as well as the legal paperwork. So the plan today is we're going to uh, work out a, a strategy to do this and then from there refine it for the next day. So uh, let's get this range going and blow some stuff up. We started out the day rather early so we can get the range all ready. Then prepared a few party favors such as grenades, detonators, and all the other fun stuff. After that, we assembled our pièce de résistance finally something to make this event somewhat interesting. We recruited a few of the BDU staff characters to become explosive goons, trained minions to mix up the kinda-pack charges so that the event attendees can get their chance to blow stuff up. First things first, testing out the blast wire to make sure it works by setting off a charge. Sure, we can use the continuity tester, as Sean would say. That actually has a continuity Excuse me. But the more fun way of doing things is to blow something up. Uh, I think it worked pretty well. While the goon squad prepared all the kinepack charges, I went to go pick up my ID badge for the day. Look everyone, I'm an influencer. So apparently, Sean is the more identifiable character on the show and I need the name badge. Apparently us brown people all look alike or whatever. The influencers have arrived. As soon as the influencers arrived, we started setting off the booms immediately. A fun process of running up and down the range to prime kinepack charges. Fun to many, but they're pretty blah to us. You should keep your eye out. You should keep your eye out. That's a little bit more than your eye. But we let the event influencers and other guests set off the explosives all day. Surprisingly, everyone got a kick out of doing it. I mean, who doesn't love blowing stuff up? That dopamine spike is super addictive once you hit that firing button. Lovely. They're going to our newest influencers from Big Daddy Lift. Yeah! Oh, it's Big Daddy Lift. Yeah! Oh, it's Big Daddy Orton. Yeah. Kinepack is fun and all, I guess. It's rather pedestrian in my opinion. Time to really spice things up say, with a wine bottle shape charge. Everything gets better with wine and explosives. We found another AR-500 plate laying around just asking to get penetrated. <laughs> Giggity. We loaded the charge with 350 grams of our Gemini explosive and stepped back to revere its beauty. So much elegance contained here. Almost a shame that we have to blow it up. Almost. All right, let's see what this shape charge can do. Everyone was eager to come out and see what these wine bottle shaped charges can do, and for good reason. It's not often that you get to see glass punch through steel. We walked up on yet another impressive sight. A nice clean hole was in the plate and a huge crater below the plate. Awesome! After we blew up stuff all morning, Sean and I developed an appetite. We decided to go score some food. Rumor has it that the food trucks were pretty decent, so it was time to investigate. Sean literally makes all his decisions while stuffing his face. Now that we were fed, Sean demonstrated a few flashbangs and other less lethal items to the crowd to keep them entertained while I worked on our main event. No. 
voila, the emerald. It's so big. That's what she said. <clears throat> All right, what's next? Our Emroid prototype. This is a little bit bigger than the Claymore because this is gonna contain 850 grams of the, our Gemini liquid explosive. And it has 600 six millimeter projectiles. I know it's freaking loud with all the gunfire. It's so annoying. Bombs are way better anyway. So we're gonna set this up against a wood target and see how it performs because I'm kind of curious. I've never done this one before. Like I said, prototype. We temporarily recruited Megan here to mix up the explosive as she claimed to be a skilled mixologist. <laughs> Outstanding bartending skills right there. She also volunteered to help set up the charge, and I never refuse free help. Keyword is free here. We will test this MRUD against this wood wall target that will give us a good idea of the projectile pattern formed from the MRUD. Hopefully it does better than our previous claymores. If you haven't seen those videos, the projectile pattern wasn't all that great, mostly because we were packing the projectiles wrong, and we solved that problem, hopefully anyways. We came up with a new way of packing the projectiles into the hull, and we're going to test it out today. The emerald was filled with 850 grams of liquid explosive. Once filled, we placed the electric blasting cap and got back to watch this bad boy in action. Well, as y'all can see, these MRUDs are a complete success, or as I say, very nice, great success. Um, some of y'all are probably not old enough to remember that. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing some more R&D on this. If you remember some of our earlier videos, I think I said this before, that before we were just throwing uh, the pellets down at the base of the target. This right here, we've got it down really well. We were getting good penetration through the target, and we're also getting pieces of the target getting embedded in there. Imagine that, like <laughs> you missed all the pellets and you got yeeted by a piece of plastic. That right there would suck to be you. As Sean stated, the frag pattern from this emerald was impressive. It peppered the board with tons of fragmentation from both the steel shot and the plastic hull. It's amazing that the plastic actually became fragmentation. But with 850 grams of explosive behind it, it can turn just about anything into fragmentation, especially at a close distance. A better view is from the back as you can see the amount of penetration that occurred. It turned this board into Swiss cheese. Now if we could only market this to Switzerland's cheese industry. Even the younger attendees were eager to experience explosives at this event. How much explosives are in there? 850 grams. What's that in American? Uh, do the math. So next up we have the soda bottle safe charge. Now we, you saw this in the previous videos. This one I made a slight improvement. It's a little bit better made, I guess you could say. So this one's gonna be having, this is gonna have 500 grams of the liquid explosive. And it should be a crowd pleaser. Everybody thought it was pretty neat. The wine bottle shape charge did phenomenally, so let's help this, see how this thing performs against the wine bottle shape charge. Maybe it redeems itself. I don't know. What do you think? Think it'll do good? Yeah. Let's we'll find out. If not, it's another boom. Who, who could argue with another boom? The AR500 target that got yeeted by the wine bottle shape charge is about to get yeeted again by the soda bottle shape charge. One good turn deserves another, as Buddy the Cat would say. I'm making everybody shake this explosive because I'm tired of doing all the shaking. So I tried to make this as, as best as possible by keeping it centered and actually level the liner with the bottle. So hopefully this thing works better and the penetration's a whole lot better than before. That right there is liquid potential energy. Time to unleash it. The soda bottle shape charge was loaded with 500 grams of the Gemini liquid explosive, giving it a bit more oomph than the wine bottle shape charge. Sean easily found a Negro volunteer to set it off in like two seconds. I mean, all he had to do was say, who wants to set this off? And a bunch of people volunteered. Say whatever you want. I don't know, they put me in charge, but... Uh, hold it down. Okay, ready? Bam. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> yes. So this Coke bottle shape charge finally performed as well. If not, maybe maybe a little bit better, I don't know. But then the wine bottle shape charge, I was actually pleasantly surprised with this one. And the crater is also pretty impressed. But you can see side by side, the wine bottle and the Coke bottle shape charge, it's about the same. Awesome. Well, I needed another large batch of explosive mixed up, so I recruited another minion to do the shaking. Delegation of duties is important when running a range. It also helps speed things up. 
What's the rush? Well, I was eager to light up yet another Emerald. Sean was rather proud of the artwork on each of these bodies. Unfortunately, we didn't have any crayons laying around because all the Marines ate them, so we had to use a paint marker. Special thanks to Malin for preparing the second Emerald. She's awesome. <laughs> I mean, this is, I, I mean, what, like six months ago, I was a vet tech, so I, this is a big career jump for me. This is Maylin. Hi. And she's helping us out today. Yes. As you can see, she's modeling our new, yeah. improved Emrud Claymore uh, anti-personnel mine system. Yes. All right. <clears throat> what you're going to do is place it on the ground, pointing at that target. Facing this way? Facing that way. Okay, Malin, are you ready for stage two? Yes. Okay, we're gonna put this explosive mm -hmm. into the Emrud. You ready? Absolutely. All right, let's do this. All right, ready? Yep. Place the funnel. Okay, so put this in here. Yeah, place that right there. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna pour it right in there. Okay, all of it? Yeah. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, it's a little overflow, but we can work with that. <laughs> All right, let's put the cap in and set it off. Okay, ready for stage three? Yes. Okay, we're gonna place the blasting cap into the Emra. Mm -hmm. All right. So very carefully place it in there. It'll fit a little friction. It'll fit, it'll fit pretty snug. Yeah, just push it. Yeah, yeah it will float a little bit. That's fine. All right, we're good. Good job. You just as assembled an explosive device. The Emrud was placed roughly in the same spot as before, oriented at the wood target. Let's see how the second Emrud performs. Though I'm pretty sure it's going to perform just as well, if not better. The second Emrud knocked the target over and penetrated the heck out of the board. So the Emruds are a complete success. I mean, they are performing better than I expected. So much so that we gotta do some more research on these and I can't wait to make a longer video on the whole thing with tons of booms. And with that Emrud is the last boom of the day and that saves us for tomorrow. So we got a whole bunch more explosions to set off tomorrow for everybody and it's been a big hit. I think it has, everybody's really enjoying it. So uh, hopefully uh, we get more people interested in explosives. Day two started out pretty much the same as day one. Sean and I got there early to prepare the range. We did a little FOD walk down and I got to mixing up some Gemini explosive for a few charges. This is the Ordnance Lab shake weight. Before the day kicks off, I headed over to the guest house to score a snack and fuel up on the ever important fluid of life, coffee, black gold, the cash cow of Starbucks. Little unknown fact about me, I drink a lot of coffee. Ah, delicious. All the guests and influencers gathered for a morning speech at the guest tent. Right about now is when I got a bit of disappointing news from Sean. This is the reason why we can't blow up anything right now. A helicopter was contracted to fly people around and they used the demo range as the landing pad, which means no booms for most of the day. Major buzzkill. Don't get me wrong, I love flying around in helos, but it just doesn't get my jollies off as much as things going kaboom. So while the helicopter did its thing, with all the gun bunnies getting their photos for the gram and the book of face, Sean and I took a break and walked around to check out the different vendor stations. Try out the food trucks again, and speak to some of the guests to plot ideas for future videos. With the helicopter rides finally ending, we readied ourselves to set off explosives again. Of course, I wasn't expecting what came next. So we got contracted to do a gender reveal party. Uh, so cliche, I know. But, uh, well, you know, any chance to use explosives is a good chance at all, in my opinion. So what we're going to do is uh, pack a charge and then place the chalk on top. Uh, I don't know what color it is. I, mean, I don't really do these things. I don't have kids. I don't want to plan on having kids. Um, but what I'm going to do is 
place a charge in the ground, and then on top of it, paste the chalk, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna directionally blow upward and blow the chalk up and you know, blah, blah, blah. So let's get to, let's get to work. So here's all the chalk. And we're gonna stash it into here so nobody can see the color. And then I'm gonna walk over to the ranch. All right, so this hole will be perfect, I think, to put the charge and then we'll put the chalk on top of that. And the idea is it'll blow up over this hill and provide a nice little gender reveal. Well, we know it's a boy. Sean arranged the crowd while I readied the charge. The expecting mother was given instructions on how to operate the blasting machine, and we got things going. So two thirds of a pound was a little bit too much or they just didn't buy enough chalk. I'm gonna go with they didn't buy enough chalk. I would've gone with a whole lot more. But still, it, short, it was sort of blue. You can see it in the video. <laughs> when explosives were mentioned to some kids at the show, you know they were eager to find out. I can't blame them as I would've been amped up like a redheaded stepchild loaded up on Adderall, Red Bull, and just freshly given a puppy. They literally fought over who got to hit the firing button. There you go, boom! Behold, Sean's favorite charge. The tandem charge. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's basically like I saw the hurt locker, so I'm basically EOD at this point. <laughs> the rest of the day we continued as yesterday where we prepared a ton of kinepack charges for the guests to set off. Time to demonstrate another soda bottle shape charge because why not? The crowd was eager to see it in action, and I love setting them off. They have a unique thump to them that I really love. Definitely a win-win. It's getting hard to tell which charge is performing better. My improvements in making both charges is definitely showing and calls for more videos on the topic. Now the real question is, which is everybody's favorite? The soda bottle shaped charge or the wine bottle shaped charge? Be sure to leave a comment on which one is your favorite. So here's the leftover explosives and Sean has the genius idea of just blowing it all up, which is a great idea. In separate charges. So we're gonna show folks, some folks this time we showed them the two charges. We're gonna show them four charges going off at once in a rolling deck board like that. It'll be initiated there. It'll come down here and set off all four and Today. We stringed up the remaining explosives with some deck core to create one big boom. There's no better way to go out than with a bang. Pun intended. One volunteer was eager to set this charge off. We showed him how to work the blasting machine and got into place. BDU 2021, it's over. Going out with the bang. Better by anything you Tell us, how would you rate your Ordis Lab experience? Uh, I would have to say, I, 12 out of 12 out of 12, 10 out of 10, a thousand out of a thousand. Doesn't get any bigger, doesn't get any better. Appreciate you guys for being out here, Big Daddy Unlimited. I'm Jeff with Battle Buddy Three Gun. Have a good night. With the last boom done, cleanup began. The range is policed up. Then Sean and I headed over to the reception area to try and pretend to be social. This is us being social. Well, this trip has finally come to an end. I'm ready to get home, and we have a bit of a drive ahead of us. Sean is finishing up the last of the packing and inventory. I'm walking the range to make sure we didn't leave anything behind, because uh, we were kind of scurrying around the past couple days. 
But I think it was quite, quite successful. We were able to <clears throat> run a range and then demonstrate explosives to a bunch of bystanders without any incidences. That's pretty impressive. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, because, yeah, explosives can be very dangerous, but, you know, when you follow the rules of safety that we established and other places do too, you know, you should not have an incident. And we didn't. And we were able to train some people with BDU to uh, help us with the, uh, the running the range, and they learned pretty dang fast. And this gives us a good prototype for what we can do other events down the road, bring out explosives, and then wow the crowd. And also, um, this is a, our first video where we vlogged. I've never, I'm not a much of, I really don't like vlogging. I really don't like being on camera. Sean's much better on camera than I am. And I, I, we figured we'd start incorporating a vlog as a better way to get personal with the audience, I guess you could say. It's not something I enjoy, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm learning as I go. Uh, a lot of other channels do it. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of it, but you know, it's something I like to experiment with and see if it improves the channel. But we have other videos coming. As you can see, we tested out the MRUD and it worked out pretty well. And we are working on them several videos for that down the road. And we want to improve our uh, the release of our videos. So we're gonna try to go to a four video release schedule. We tried doing it before, but I got activated with the National Guard, which definitely slowed things down. But be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it helps us out a lot. And also comment. Anything, you know, if you see something in the video that you liked or disliked, if you'd like to see, you know, future projects, be sure to leave it in the comments. We read the comments. I try to engage as much as I can with the comments. And that's how we figure out what, you know, how to take this channel further. Is all the subscribers and all the viewers and all the, the ideas we get from y'all. That's how we keep making more videos because it's, you know, what you want to watch. And we enjoy making these videos for you. Hope you enjoyed this video though, and uh, be sure to stick around. We'll have a, uh, another video coming out soon, but until then, stay tuned here at Ordnance Lab.